Hey guys, Artosis here, bringing you some more Caster Music and Rockstar League. This right now is a Group A, and it is the winner's match. Whoever wins here goes into the round of 16. We have in the top right of Odyssey, Yoon, playing one of the fastest uh, pro games that we've ever seen. Oh, poor Nansu just absolutely did not have that timing down. And then we have in the bottom left, YSC. You might accidentally hear me call him Tilbo. He uses both the IDs pretty interchangeably. Uh, but yeah, this is Odyssey. As you can see, there's two gases in the main, a 4,000 geyser and a 1,000 geyser. Obviously, the 1,000 runs out relatively quickly. Uh, and, you know, normally a geyser has 5,000. So it's overall the same amount of gas, although you do continue to mine two gas per run on a, a depleted geyser on StarCraft. One. Uh, another thing to mention, it's a two-player map. We also have a very interesting base down here, which I guess I will describe once someone actually scouts it out. Uh, but you can't send military units to it. Only workers can get down there. So, anyways, the uh, probe going on the little scouting journey here up to Yoon's base in the top right. And that is, once again, a nine pool from Yoon. So, opening up very aggressively against both players. I don't think there's any chance in the entire universe that this game will be like the last where Yoon just runs by some Zerglings and gets in. YSC certainly one of the stronger new Protosses. Like he's been coming up uh, lately quite a bit. He's been playing in like the KCM Race Survival Series a lot. He's been in ASL a lot. Uh, he's kind of been all over the place and that is because he is a very sturdy, very strong Protoss. And you can see his forge is going down and let's see like Look, he's not even making as many lings as he made against Nansu. It looks like... Oh, no, he does end up going for six. Okay. Uh, just a slightly delayed egg because of the Overlord being made there. Just kind of optimizing everything. But watch. I guarantee you we're going to have a hold here from YSC. Uh, there's no way. Like, if we had two games in a row like that, that would be so sad. All right. There's the six lings. And let's see, uh, let's see what he does. I like this. I like this. So what this does is it slows down the lings, that blocking of the hatchery, because, uh, you know, obviously Yoon wants to take that base right away. But the blocking of this hatchery makes it so he doesn't need to pull probes. He doesn't need an additional building. The cannons will actually finish by the time the lings get there. So you can see one of the interesting and clever ways that you can slow these lings down. I was talking about in the Nansu game, you know, throwing down a gateway and just putting two probes, right? Because if you just slow them a little bit, you only need a couple seconds and the cannons finish. And then the lings just can't run by. Uh, but yeah, you need to have like a repertoire of different ways to slow things down. It's so incredibly important. StarCraft at the top levels really is a game of just seconds. And just these small, tiny things where you shave time down helps so much. Now, I want to mention, first off, he left two lings back to block the probe from coming in. And in fact, you can see this one has a kill right there. So he did end up killing the probe, which is nice. And what he's trying to block is scouting of his main base. Uh, okay, it's a Hydralis Den off of two bases, off of two hatcheries. This is not something that I expected at all. Uh, Zergling speed is on the way as well. I feel like I haven't seen a two hatch Hydra bust in literally like 15 years. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the last time I saw it. It has been a hot minute. Um, I actually thought we were gonna see a quick layer to Hatchery Mutilus, because actually come into rotation in this matchup. I've actually seen it a few times and I was excited to talk to you guys about that, but uh, that is not what we're gonna see. Zergling speed and Hydralisk speed. So Yoon wants to just bust immediately. Uh, he is chasing this probe around. Zergling speed is going to finish pretty quickly here. Uh, so he will be able to catch the probe, but the probe... Here's the thing. You don't know for sure where that third base is going to be. Uh, we can't quite see it. We see the patch here, uh, which helps units to, to jump through. But there's basically a gate here and then a neutral cannon down here that you have to kill and an expansion. So he may, as he goes over here and sees nothing there, he might be like, oh, maybe, maybe he took that back base. Not that common because you have to kill that neutral cannon with drones, and now he sees Zergling speed. Okay, so maybe that should be sent him off a little bit. Look, he's Zealot looking at another possible third base location, and right now it's looking like two base. 
So this might be a play on the fact that two hatchery mutilisk has become popular. Because when you play against that, you need a cannon in this mineral line and you need a cannon in this mineral line. And if he ends up going for those and then Speedling Hydra comes down across the map, uh, he may not have enough at the front, right? Like if you only have two cannons here, but then you're making your cannons for anti mutilisk yeah, that could go very badly for you. So I'm not sure. Maybe maybe that's what it is. I don't know exactly how popular it is at the pro level. I have seen pros start to use it though. Um yeah, let's let's see. In fact, now that I'm thinking of it, oh wait, no. I I I was the other day I actually saw a pro use the two hatch uh muta and I was thinking it was Yoon, but I think it was actually Yabsab I saw do it. Uh it was one of the two, but yeah, this he could be playing into his image. Here we see him pushing back this Zealot with those Speed Hydras. So right now we have a ton of cannons being made. He knows that he absolutely must hold this because this is a two hatchery Hydralisk with only 15 drones. Like if if uh, YSC holds this, obviously he's got to be at an advantage. Look at the worker count. He's got over twice as many. He's making a lot of cannons right now. It seems like the Hydras are going to be a little bit late. He has Hydralisk range now. Let's see how this goes. The Zergling's being held back by these Zealots. The Hydra's actually gunning down two cannons very quickly. He hasn't lost too many Hydras either. It looks like he's going to open up the wall, but more cannons are being made. He needs to target this down before that finishes for sure. He's going to be able to target the forge down, but there is a secondary forge in the main base already. So very smart move there from YSC to get that going. Uh, opening up this surface area definitely can help, but I think there's just going to be enough cannons. He is going to eventually have to kill some of these cannons. This is this is a wall on the ramp. He's not going to be able to get units out this way, and you don't want to rally through there. So eventually some of these will have to be killed, but it looks to me like he's safe. In the meantime, this Corsair has killed two Overlords, which is absolutely fantastic. This Zealot is causing a little bit of a ruckus as well. And look at that, even another cannon. Well, I mean, I guess he saw a few Hydras still being made over at Yoon's base, but I think Yoon is switching, right? He's We see that third base being taken. Now, I want to see how Yoon actually comes back in this spot. Because this looks really bad to me. The fact that his drone count is still doubled and he's droning pretty heavily now, that's painful. Uh, he is making a fourth hatch here for macro. Uh, YSC in the meantime, plus one on the way, legs on the way. Templar Archives coming up. Uh, don't forget, he does have this third gas that can be utilized. It only lasts for 3 minutes and 20 seconds at the full income, but that will provide you with a lot of high Templar. Uh, and look at that, a Robo as well. So right now, YSC is just kind of getting everything. He saw the layer on the way, so I, I think he might look at this and say, you know what, it seems obvious that this can turn into Hydra Lurker, right? Maybe you want to set up a Hydra Lurker containment here. Another place that we see a lot of Hydra Lurker on this map. You zoom out a little bit. This is a, the most common third base for Zerg. And anytime you have a ramp, Hydra Lurker on top is almost impossible for Protoss to break. Right? Lurkers are just too good against Zealots. And Dragoons fire very slowly. So 50% missed shots going to high ground while they're taking damage. It's not doable. Uh, those types of positions. Anytime you have these types of positions, Hydra Lurker absolutely love them against Protoss. So... Just some things to think about. Uh, we should have the range for Dragoon start pretty soon. He is utilizing this third gas. I love to see that. I almost never see this on two base, but I think that this is absolutely called for. Like, get that gas. Get those units out. Oh my God, a Dark Archon. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. Okay, so what this is for is Maelstrom. Uh, Maelstrom is an amazing counter to Mutalisks. If you have a situation where you don't want to build Corsairs for some reason, right? He had the one Corsair, obviously skipping because you don't need it against this, but he doesn't know if we're going to have Mutas come out. There is a Spire coming up, so very likely we will have Mutas coming out. But if you Maelstrom the Mutas it, while they're in that clump, it, first off, you hide this from your opponent. You don't want them to see that you have the Dark Archon. But if you Maelstrom the Mutas and throw one Storm on them, they die. They do start to spread a little bit under it, so sometimes they'll walk out, and so you might want like some Dragoons there or an Archon with it, but seriously, this is such a strong move when Protoss do it. I'm so, so, so excited about this. Uh, in the meantime, we have a DT drop out into the center. One Dark Templar, two High Templar in this shuttle. Look at all this gas he's getting, man. 
this is fantastic watching him get all the gas units at once. He's even putting a cannon behind here. This is for Lurker Drop. Oh, I love it. I love how ISC is playing this. He's going up into eight gates now. Observatory coming. And here we go. The DT walks the third base, starting to get kills. The drop into the natural. Uh, well, he's storming some of the retreat paths. He doesn't get as many drones as I thought he might there, but really any damage to the drone economy is fantastic at the moment. Got three there. Here goes a DT into the main. There's no units up here to help out. YSC absolutely dominating after that cheese opening from Yoon. My God. Very, very cool stuff to see. Another storm drop. Oh, he doesn't have that. <laughs> he does not have the energy, and now the Scourge comes. So this little High Templar is going to sit there and hope that he gets enough. Now, here are the Mutas. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I am I am incredibly, incredibly excited to see if the Mutas get Maelstrom and destroyed. He has enough energy for it already. Maelstrom is on the way right now. Not done yet, though. Not done yet. The Mutas are just sitting there, so that's, that's good. Because as soon as you see a Dark Archon, you won't clump your Mutas anymore. You'll kind of keep them away. You might keep them fanned out like this, but when you're flying in with them to either snipe probes or high Templars, you do need to clump them up so they all shoot at the same time. You can't do anything with them when they're like this. The mutas don't fight well like this. They need to be stacked. Okay, here we go. Stacks them up. Maelstrom, not done yet. Okay, flies one in to check. Flies away. Okay. Not sure yet. Dark Archon is actually with the army. I believe he hasn't seen it yet. Now, here come the Mutas. Here come the Mutas. Here come the Mutas. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. And, he, well, he he gets some of them. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, as you can see, with two Mutas left, it, I, he didn't get all of them, but he got enough that they are now basically useless. Two Mutas don't do anything. So now, walking across the map, look at this sick, teched-out army. Tons of Psy Storm. Uh, he will have another Maelstrom actually pretty soon. It does work on Hydras. Storming up onto that high ground. Not many melee units in here, right? We have a DT and two Zealots for tanking purposes, but I think he has enough damage to just break up anyways. DT does get picked off very quickly. Almost at that energy for a Maelstrom. He does have enough for another one. And gets the Maelstrom down. Beautiful play there. These Hydras unable to attack for a certain amount of time. And will be able to pick all those off. Look at this. The Zealot reinforcements. They go up to the high ground and tank for the Dragoons. The Dragoons coming up from behind. And GG is called. Great play from YSC. He advances to the round of 16.